to remind you that if you haven't already done so, this is a book you need to buy for this course. Okay, all right. Um, so we're looking at chapter 13, all right? Chapter 13, all right? So just want to let you know that some of the page references, like see page 539 here, okay? That's in edition 15. So in edition, in edition 16, the one you have, it's actually 545. Are you with me here, All right? So it's still the same chapter, and basically there's a few more pages. The page may be different. All right. So I'm not here to confuse you. All right. But remember, the learning objectives haven't changed. Okay. So let's keep moving on this. All right. Okay. So this is what Horngren tells us. There are three influences on demand and supply: customers, competitors, and costs. And I'm thinking, really. I don't just believe what textbooks say, all right? Textbooks say a lot of rubbish sometimes. Scary. What I want to know is talk to real people. So I started back in 2010, I've been doing every year since, when I meet China suppliers, I ask them, what is your biggest challenge? And I've actually asked that question to over probably about 2,000, nearly 3,000 suppliers now. But here is a graph of their response when I asked in 2011. It hasn't changed from year to year. These challenges basically are the same. What are they? Cost control. Wow! Today's lecture is about costs. I love it. All right? You want to be learning something that is a challenge for business. That means what we're teaching you is relevant for business. Ah, all right? Number two, competition. Number three, sales growth. Okay, what does Horngren say? Customers, competitors, and costs. The same three. Wow! It's real. Okay, so I just want to show you that even my own interviews. Now, this is old, but I've done, I've done this same in 2017, and we get similar we get same three things coming up, making up over half of the responses. It may be one year competition may be here and cost control here, all right? But it's always cost control, competition, sales growth. Wow. Okay, so that's why you should ask your restaurant manager or the person for your case study, what is your biggest challenge? Uh, how are you managing your challenge? Okay, so, and how you manage it, if it's cost control, what are they doing? Most of them, uh, they're trying to automate, or they're trying to improve production efficiency, or they're trying to collect more quotations, or they're trying to increase the product price, pass it on to their customer. Can you see that? That everything that we're talking about in chapter 13 is, resonates when I talk to real factories. Now, um, I can give you, I didn't, I don't think this is in your PowerPoint slide, but this is something that's not examinable, but I just want to show you the reality of what chapter 13 is talking about, okay? All right? Influences on demand and supply, so customers, competitors, and costs. So let's move on. Now, now we go to phase two. Ah, how many phases do we have to do this week, do you know? You want to know you're making progress, right? All right, all right, all right. This is, this is, this is your, all right? Remember, this is like on your iPhone, right? All right, then phase um, uh, one, then phase two, then phase three, then four, right? And so here, we're, we're up to here. And so, you know, it's just like, that's where we're up to now, right? So I know you can understand what that means, all right? So you know you, you, two, three, and four is coming, okay? So phase two, long-run decisions. Ah, so time horizons and pricing. So here is where we depart from your old introduction to management accounting and we jump into chapter 13. That is, from now on, we're focusing on long run. Long run. In the long run, we need to understand how customers make 
long run pricing decision. Consider all future variable fixed costs and earn a t what fixed costs? No, but fixed costs. Fixed costs are not a relevant cost. Right? Your professor from last semester said fixed costs are not relevant. Am I right? And now the professor's telling you, yes, it's relevant now. Yes, what you learnt last semester is wrong. No, no, no. All right? What you learnt last semester is the short run. In the short run, fixed costs are not relevant. Ah, now the long run, all costs are relevant. Ah, so it, it's a little bit more complicated what you need to go through in understanding how costs need to be managed. Ah, you need to... See, when you're focusing on relevant costs in the short run, you're th trying to think, oh, how do we cut variable material costs? How do we cut variable labour, right? You with me? Ah, but now in the long run, fixed costs now become relevant. Now we've got to start to think, how can we cut fixed costs? Are you with me here? You see that? Now we've got more costs that we need to try and cut. All right? And believe you me, fixed costs are huge. Fixed costs are not just a little extra one that's tacked on to the end. No, no, no. Fixed costs for a lot of companies could be make up 50% of the total costs. So now we need to be very, very smart in thinking about how can we manage those fixed costs. It's not just a little bit, it's substantial. And we're going to show you shortly. All right? Now, and that's what this big point is being made in chapter 13. And for those that love, bought the textbook to feel as though that, you know, you're getting value out of the textbook, page 546. Okay, learning objective two. Okay. By the way, they asked me, the publisher contacted me and asked, oh, can we get you to write some case studies to put in the textbook? I said, and I said no. But I was thinking, no, 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 no. My, two, my case studies are too good for this textbook. <laughs> so I've pub I published them through the Harvard Business Clearinghouse, and much better. Okay, so here we go. Fe uh, but this textbook is good. It's not. Th this textbook is good. Don't get me wrong here. All right. Costs are often irrelevant for short-run policy decisions, such as fixed costs, and cannot be changed, and generally relevant in the long run, because costs they can be altered in the long run. They can be altered in the long run. Ah. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back in history, and this may be before you were born. How many of you were around in 1981? Anyone? No, okay, all right. Well, which the, here are three computers. Now, your job now is to tell me which one was invented in 981, which one 983, and which one 984. Uh, this one here, when was that invented? Hands up for 81. Hands up for 83. Hands up for 84. Okay, 83. All right, this one here. All right, this one here. Hands up for 81. Hands up for 84. Okay, this one's 81. I had my hands on this one in 81. I had a lend of it, and I'd, I was programming BASIC on this. You can program BASIC. 981. All right, all right. This one here, you all know the Apple Mac was introduced in 984, very popular uh, release by Apple. Okay, so what does that, why am I showing you this? Because the big exercise in chapter 13, and that exercise starts on page 548, page 548, okay? The big exercise talks about Astell computers. They make two brands. And Data Tech asked Astell to bid on supplying 5,000 pro value computers over three months in 2008. Okay, now in chapter 13, now they say, oh no, no, it's not 2008, we're talking about 2012 or 2016. So they, they change the dates a little bit, okay? But it's the same, same numbers, same company, same computers. And here are the relevant costs. So, 
This is short run. Please circle this. Short run. Please circle this. Okay. Relevant cost. 460 plus 64 direct labour. $50 overhead, $574. Now that $50 overhead, it, it was a special note. Okay. It's not specifically written in the list of accounts. Okay. On page... 548. It's not there specific. It's just a note saying that $50 fixed costs of additional capacity to make pro value. Okay, 250 divided by so in other words, it's a special additional charge for this special order. Exactly what you learnt in management accounting one, your first management accounting unit. Okay, now there's some market intelligence that. Other bidders may bid between 596 and 610. So what you learn in basic management accounting is, well, let's just bid $1 below, and the profit we're going to make is going to be the difference between 574 and 595, multiplied by 5,000, and so therefore the difference between these two is our profit, 105,000. Okay, so that's your basic cost volume profit analysis type strategy. That's short term. Short term, not long term. Okay? And there's your calculation. So, you, you know, the total manufacturing costs, and we can do some activity-based costing, is going to be, really, it's $680. Okay? Because we've got to allocate overhead, and we've got direct materials, got labour, and then the cost per unit is 680 that's basically, and that's set out very, very clear, very, very clear on page 549 of the textbook. Okay, 549 of the textbook. Ah, so basically what, the, what chapter 13 is doing is actually reminding you of what you learnt in your introduction to management accounting. Okay, taking the principles what you learnt last semester, this is, what you, this is your calculation. Uh, this is short run, not long run. So we're going to have a break soon, and then when we come back, we're going to have a look at some of the long run issues. But here is the challenge. Here is the challenge. See, in the short run, we can say, oh, $680 is the cost of making this unit. Okay? But in the long run, what about research and development? What about design? What about market? What about distribution? What about customer service? What about all these costs? Who's going to pay for that? Huh? I don't know. Shareholders, they can pay for that. The company, you will lose if you don't take that into all of these costs into account. So now we add up all these costs here. And what do we get? Now the full cost is $900, $900, and someone is asking us to bid $575, like, like big difference, right? Put your hand up if you would reject the bid. Hands up if you reject the bid. In the long run, you should, right? Because you need to think about all of these costs here. Ah, this is what's new to this unit. This is what's new to chapter 13 that you did not c consider in your first management accounting unit. Are you with me here? Ah, what, do we, how, what do we do? What do we do with this? How do we account for it? Or, you know, is this, what can we do? Are we stuck with it? Is there some way that we can reduce that? Like, that's a big reduction to go from 900 down to under 600. It feels impossible. And that's why, chapter 13, they present this impossible case to you on page 548 and 549. They present it to you. And you're thinking, well, what do we do now? Like, what do we do? And that's the, that's the challenge. That's where you need to, uh, we're going to cover, uh, we need to think about, we need to think about 
And the big question is, the big question is, is market uh, competition, all right? And there's our, there's our gauge, all right? And that's low, and that's high, all right? Is market competition here, or is market competition there? That's the big question. Because if market competition is here, then you need to do something about that 900 plus dollars of full cost. You with me here? Because market competition, it will kill you. You won't be able to get away with it. But if market competition is low, oh, maybe you can get away with it. You with me here? Ah, so that's, all right. So what's important is we, if market competition is high, then we need to focus on a market-based price. We need to think about, we need to go backwards. When market price is high, there, oh, that's my phone. Where's my, um, I've got, do I, I need, I need, help me, I need a duster. Oh, here it is. If market competition is, let's get this out of here. All right, you can draw a picture, I love pictures. If market competition is high, then there's the customer, all right? With lots of money in his hands to give to you for your product, then you need to price according to what this person says. Ah, if market competition is low, then all you have to worry about is what are your costs? What are your costs? And then, oh, let's just add 10%. And then that's our price. Ah, see, the, the, when the market competition is high, the customer is t dictating what the price is. Ah, when the market competition is low, you can do cost plus pricing. Are you with me? That's the difference. It, that's simple. Ah, wow. That's beautiful. I love that. Okay, so what chapter 13 takes you through now is said, well, in the computer market, things are very competitive. They are very competitive. So we, 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 actually, we have to work here. So is there some way that we can survive? Is there some mechanism we can use when we don't have any control over what price we set? We don't have control. We don't have control. All right, we just got to go with, look, all the other competitors are selling this. We need to sell at this. So how do we survive? How do we bring that $900 full cost down and make it lower? Well, for the last 20, 30 years, what the factory response to this is, oh, let's just double the volume. Are you with me? If you double the volume, then fixed cost per unit cut in half. Are you with me here? That's been the, but like I told you now that Monash did an order 1,000 red seats, okay? Buyers are now ordering all different colours. So that strategy no longer really exists, all right? That's the challenge that factories face today, all right? So when I go into factories, I teach them about target costing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have a break, and when we come back, what, phase three already? Wow, all right? So there we go, phase three, and then we're going to introduce to you target costing. Ah, and then phase four we're going to cover on Thursday, all right? But phase three is a big phase, all right? So I want you to, when you're back in 10 minutes, I want you to be ready for phase three, target costing. And I love target costing, absolutely love it. Thank you.